What's up guys, this is Ty the Asian Wonder, your online personal trainer again. And in this video, I want to talk about a very important concept uh, regarding muscle fibers. Again, we've been talking about the uh, endurance fibers and the strength and speed fibers, right? And what I want to do is talk about the different types of fuel systems that they use. And once you understand the different types of fuel systems that they use, what it will do is that it will allow you to tailor your workout so that it fits specifically what it is that you're trying to do, whether you're trying to get leaner or get more muscle, get faster or get stronger, it doesn't matter. You'll be able to use the right fuel for your body. Now what happens is inside the muscle cells, guys, right, I'm going to split this in half again where the, the, the speed fibers at the top here, inside your muscle cells, it looks like this. Here's the muscle cell. And inside the, the fuel that's being used inside the strength and speed fibers, it uses a special fuel that I'm just going to call it ATP. Now, there's very scientific names for it. Some people call it glycogen. Some people call it uh, phosphagen. Some people call it creatine and any of these things, right? I don't want you guys to think about any of that. Just know that this the difference between the fast twitch speed fibers and the endurance slow twitch fibers is where the fuel is sitting at. It's not so much important as what kind of fuel it is, it's where is the fuel sitting at. It's anaerobic right here and down here it's aerobic. We'll also go ahead and label this as the uh, speed fibers here so you guys can remember that and we'll also go ahead and label this as the endurance here. So it's easy to remember here. Now, keep in mind guys, that the way that this cell works is that it takes oxygen out here, the air that we breathe, and it takes the fat right here, and it imports it inside the cell. And that's how it burns, that's where it gets its fuel from. These cells, these muscle cells, are no different than your car engine. Your car engine needs air, and it needs um, gasoline or diesel or kerosene or ethanol to burn, right? So in order for these aerobic endurance fibers to burn, it has to combine oxygen that's from your blood and the fat that's in your blood or the energy, the glucose that's in your blood and it mixes it inside the cell and that's how it burns and that's how it works. Now, this takes time for to the cell to bring the oxygen and the fat inside the muscle cell to burn it. That takes time. It doesn't happen instantly. And if we were being chased by a saber-toothed tiger and we had to wait for the oxygen to be delivered and the fat to be delivered inside the muscle cells, our ass would not be standing here right now. I wouldn't be standing here talking to you guys on this video. So what Mother Nature did was she created what we call the anaerobic or the speed fibers. And what it is is it's muscle fibers that has the fuel inside already. And let me go ahead and change the color of this just so that it's easier to understand, guys. Um, the fuel in here is called ATP, or some people call it phosphagen, or some people call it glycogen, and all this. I don't care what the fancy names are, and if you're a biologist or a chemist watching this and you're jumping on my ass because I'm saying it wrong, I really don't care. What's important here, guys, if you're trying to lose fat off your ass or your gut, or you're trying to get more muscle, is that the fuel is sitting inside the cell. So this happens very quick. If the body needs to uh, contract the fibers and activate the fast uh, speed fibers, it burns immediately because why? Because the, the fuel is inside the cell. Now, since the fuel is sitting outside the cell on these endurance fibers, it takes time to bring it in. Another way, guys, that you can remember how the difference between the fast um, speed muscle fibers and the endurance, slow endurance muscle fibers is, I also like to use a comparison of the fuel is that you can think of the ATP and the phosphagen fuel that's inside the cell as being something like nitrous oxide that's in a race car. So I'm going to put nitrous oxide right here. And the nitro that's in, in your, uh, these race cars, like the ones they use in the, fast in, in the movie, the Fast and the Furious and stuff, it gives you a really quick burst of high intensity, high power speed but it's very limited and if you try to run on that nitrous all the time, it's going to blow up your engine block and it's way exerting and it will destroy your car engine, right? So what happens is in this, the nitrous oxide or the ATP or the phosphagen or however you want to call this, right, is just a quick burst. Like I said, guys, it's 30 to 60 seconds and the best way to remember that 
uh, in comparison to this, is this is like the regular gasoline engine. And the fuel that you use here is just like gasoline. Right? So in your aerobic fibers or your slow endurance fibers, what it does is that it can go continuously a much longer duration of time because it's steady and it's continuous and it's not going to blow up your engine. Now on this, it's only a short quick burst guys. The other thing that's important to know where the location of the fuel source is at is also how is the waste product being removed. Remember guys, this is no different than your car engine. So once the fuel is burned in your car, the, the exhaust comes out the exhaust fume in your muffler, right? Well, the ATP that's being burned inside this muscle cell right here, when it gets burned, it becomes what's called lactic acid. And that acid has to be pumped outside the cell and once it's cleared out, then it has to bring in and reload it with ATP again or the fuel inside the muscle cell again. And that's the reason why you can only do, you can only train the speed fibers or the fast twitch fibers for only 30 to 60 seconds because inside the muscle cells, there's only enough ATP fuel to last for 30 to 60 seconds. And that's the reason why when somebody trains for longer than 30 to 60 seconds, I can tell instantly that they are not training the strength and the speed fibers, they're training these fibers down here. Now the advantage of this down here is that once the body starts to import and bring uh, fuel inside the muscle cells and burn it, it releases a byproduct or a waste product called carbon dioxide. And how do you get rid of carbon dioxide? You just breathe it back out. And once you breathe it out, it's gone out of your body. And that's the reason why when you're doing aerobic exercise, it's good to breathe. Why? Because you're getting rid of the waste products that these endurance fibers and endurance cells are producing in your body and you can get rid of it quickly and that's why you can train this for one minute to an unlimited time or a long period of time. Why? Because it gets rid of the waste product very fast and that's the key guys. If you guys understand how the fuel, where the fuel is located and how the body gets rid of the waste product, the exhaust fumes after the, the fuel is being used, you will understand which fibers to train. So if you're a football player, a uh, basketball player, or any of the major sports uh, uh, that you're playing, soccer, anything like that, you will know that, hey, if you're going to take a burst of speed, you know that you have 30 to 60 seconds before you use up all the fuel inside and you have to recover. And that's why later on in the conditioning and the endurance exercise that I share with you guys, I'll teach you guys how to exactly to determine how much time that your body needs to recover that fuel, to re reload that fuel so you're ready for the next burst again of speed. And that's why the athletes, the football players and the uh, soccer players that don't understand this, they, they're at a huge disadvantage, guys. And if you guys understand this, whether, in whatever sport that you're in, you have such a huge advantage on your opponent because you'll know how long it takes to recover, especially with the MMA guys that I train. When I show them, explain to them how to recover their fuel quickly, they're able to go out there, throw the flurries of punches and strikes, come back and, real, and, and, and buy time because they know how long it takes to recover, to reload their muscles with fuel again, and then to go in there and strike with maximum power again. Now, if you don't know that, you're at a huge disadvantage because you're going to be wasting your time. You're going to go in there with a flurry of punches and strikes and realize that you're out of gas and you come back and you're trying to throw more punches and strikes and you're not going to get maximum speed and power out of it because your muscle cells, the fuel has not been reloaded for you to be to throw more power strikes, okay? So very important to understand this. Now, if you're trained to burn body fat, then obviously you want to train in this, in, in, in endurance and the aerobic range, the muscle fibers. Why? Because it's going to be burning more fat uh, than, than these up here. So keep that in mind guys, and if you have any confusion, I would invite you guys to watch this again so that you understand how the fuel is being located, where it's located at, and how the body puts it inside the muscle cells, and how the body gets rid of it once it's being used. And if you understand that, you have a huge advantage on training yourself, or if you're training others, or if you're just looking for athletic performance, or you're trying to get rid of the fat ass or the gut that you have on you. Okay guys? So thanks for watching this video, and if you have any questions, just Leave it in the comment box.